Okay. Uh, and I got some uh, individual questions for each project, uh, and I will open it up to you guys as well. Uh, we'll start with um, Hitch. Uh, where, where did you film that? We actually filmed that in Boise, Idaho. Really? On Reds. Wow. Mind you, two of them. Okay. But what's interesting is we filmed it in basically a half a day. We were picture locked by the end of the day. Uh, filmed, uh, brought my um, editor up from, from L.A. To, to, to help us out with it. But it took another eight weeks to do the special effects. Oh, okay. Uh, summertime? And was, right? Yeah, yeah okay. summertime. Yeah. Sure, okay. And the actress, she looked a lot like Sarah, a younger Sarah Jessica Parker. Did, did, yeah, many people you, have said that. She's actually yeah. a professional ballerina. That was her oh. first acting film, which was interesting um, with her, that ballerinas do not make sounds Interesting. All. Okay. They're trained not to, you know, utter, you know, sounds when they move. So we kept saying, hey, you know, you can, you can kind of scream or you can, um, you know, make, you know, be excited or whatever. She made no sounds. And the uh, co-producer over <laughs> there, Tina Barnett, had to do all the dubbing of everything. Ah, uh, jeez. ADR? Yep. Yep. I, I, unfortunately, I'm an actor too. Well, not unfortunately, but I'm an actor too. And uh, yeah, I, I've been down that road before, which is unfortunate. But uh, yes, counter histories. Got a yes. question for you. Um, big history buff? Always. Always. Uh, since okay. I was a kid, I've always found uh, history to be rather fascinating. And I have two uh, parents who are teachers and grandmothers who were teachers. So. Mm -hmm. Everybody talked about history all the time. Okay, and what made you decide to do this project specifically to 1961, was it? Yeah. Correct. Actually, an opportunity sort of uh, came uh, uh -huh. the way of my production company as, as well, and that it was more about being affiliated or having a strategic partnership with a third party that enabled us to actually make the film. But it's the type of subject matter that I was sort of all in yeah. once it was, it was pitched uh, to me. I... Um, my father grew up in the uh, the Deep South, and sure. actually, uh, 1961 was sort of his sort of coming of age time. Okay, right? my father was a young man, just getting ready for college at that particular time as as well. So I'd always heard all of these stories, and um, I ended up being very inspired by my father's youth at that time, and went back and started looking in his yearbooks and things uh -huh. like that, and sort of discovered this whole other universe that had existed long before I had come along as well. And I thought, wow, this might be kind of exciting to tell this kind of story. Yeah, I mean, I guess you'd be considered a baby boomer, right, your father? Yes. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. It's just, that's an interesting, I'm a history buff too. So that's a very interesting uh, time frame, I think. I, baby boomers in the audience, anyone? No? Okay, because it's new media, is that why? Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, congratulations for making it through. <laughs> um, uh, and then is, is it like something of a docudrama it almost looks like? It's a docudrama. Okay. It, yeah. it, there was a lot of risk uh, yeah. in, involved because docudrama usually sort of conjures up feelings of uh, not very good storytelling. It's the, okay. the kind of thing that people don't really go uh, out of their way to, to think about or create or make. And, you know, docudrama types of stuff is, are things that come on late night on cable. Right. You know, right. rather than something that you're trying to tell a serious story with. So we took a chance and yeah. we felt like it, it worked and people seemed to really respond to it. Okay, great. Uh, let's see, I'll ask, uh, uh, let's see, popping the question. You were like the voice. Oh, the character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you had much. some words of uh, wisdom there. Exactly. Yeah, did you, does that speak from experience, from you, the writer? Oh, or? yeah, so this was written by my acting coach, Doug Warhead, who's also a psychotherapist. Uh, so it's probably his point of view. Yeah. Uh, but I was a, I mean, I studied psychology alongside acting uh, at USC, so that really resonated with me. Sure. I definitely agree with the words of wisdom, even though it may have come across as a bit mawkish. I definitely agree with the, you know, the sentiment behind it. Yeah, yeah. No, I was like, well, that's actually pretty profound for, for you know, but right. yeah, good, good words of wisdom. Yeah. Um, I got a question, and maybe someone in the audience is probably going to ask you the same question, but... This film had more cameos than like the end of Anchorman 2. <laughs> how did you how'd you do that? I I reached out to people that I knew that I think wanted to first of all help me because I think that first of all they're all very, very kind people and some of them are here today so thank you. I think that people remember where they came from and how they started and I didn't force anybody to do anything more than half a day. So it was ah. about it was about being prepared to get them in and get them out. Yeah. And um and just making it run as smoothly as possible and then just the faith that I could do that I I guess um is what allowed them to come in and 
and and help me out. And everybody was amazing. I didn't have to hold auditions. I, I, we didn't rehearse outside of you know coming in and doing a run through. Yeah. Um, and I'm very grateful to all of them. And some of them are here right now. They oh, are. Okay. Well, thank you because <laughs> that was uh, that was very interesting. Yeah, that was uh, that was fun. Everybody laughs at Henry Winkler. That's the the one. Yeah, that really. Is so hey, funny. Mr. C. He would yeah. ask me for my autograph. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, you see Kelly humor. Preston walking dog. Yeah, you're yeah. taking her dogs or yeah. Uh, okay, great. Um, and you, sir, uh, are you into tree houses yourself, or is it just kind of more of like a? Uh, yeah, we've been in a. Uh, I, I built the app with my brothers and friends okay. in uh, Seattle. We kind of have a small production team, I in, guess. In Seattle, okay. Yeah, and um, we've kind of we kind of grew up with tree houses. Yeah, I mean, I did, I'm from New England, but yeah, likewise, <laughs> I don't know, if maybe some of the audience. Yeah, so it kind of just relate to that. Um, and a couple of our friends, um, uh, one of our friends, uh, Pete, has a TV show on uh, uh -huh. Discovery Channel and Animal Planet, and so um, we kind of helped, kind of. Uh, Things just kind of evolved and turned into that. We we're looking for a, a cool proof of concept, I guess, for some of our work. Yeah, and um, that kind of turned into it. We we're kind of thinking um, it's a little bit like a pick and choose, where um, you, you see things on the web a lot, where you basically see like a photo and like some writing, and maybe you'll get like a video or something like it with it. But it's like sometimes you want to dive in a little bit more into the content, and that's kind of what we were thinking, where you, you kind of give the user the choice, so you know they basically can go through the app and only see photos. They can go through the app and just see virtual tours. Mm -hmm. So we are just kind of uh, picking at the idea of, or thinking of the idea of kind of just uh, giving the user control of what kind of content they'd like to see. Mm -hmm. So they can watch an hour's worth of video if they want, or they can go see videos. Of, or even, uh, we even work with the experts basically so you can learn how to build a treehouse. Yeah. Up, or like... The yeah, actual professional like, way, yeah. yeah, it was like independent contractors all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. As a purist, I'm like, that's cheating. <laughs> you got to get your dad or, you know, your friends to, yeah. Yeah, no, but, they got uh, some really cool hardware they got that, yeah. like, connects. So we, basically as much information as you want about treehouses as we can have. Yeah. And then the Pacific Northwest is just because we're in the Pacific Northwest. So. Sure. Was it all Seattle or did you Portland uh, No, we did, we did the general area, not okay. just Seattle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of cool tree houses in there. Some some really expensive, really nice. Yeah, ones. no kidding. Yeah, yeah, nicer than my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah, cool. Any other questions? Or? Uh, well, yeah, I got more. Well, actually, I can open it up to uh, to whoever's out there if you'd like. At this point, oh, we do. Uh, then yes, shoot. I have a question for the treehouse app. Uh, yeah, well, I helped film the pilot for Treehouse Masters, um, which is uh, the TV show on Animal Planet and uh, Discovery Channel, um, and that. Uh, it's a pretty popular show. It gets like uh, I think like 1.5 million viewers an episode, and so I helped uh, I helped create the I don't know pilot or demo whatever they call that thing, um, and then from there uh, I've been working kind of with Pete on a bunch of different things. So, what was your question again though? Oh, building them myself. Oh, I built trios myself. Yeah, one of them is actually featured in the app. So I've done, but but building it professionally. Yeah, I'm friends with a lot of the builders. So I, I kind of help them out in my free time sometimes. But uh, me starting a treehouse building company, <laughs> I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. Anyone else there in the audience? No? Okay, well, um, maybe. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, sort of categorizing uh, the value of, of, of what uh, we were working on at that particular time. What are the most important things that we want to make sure people understand and then sort of putting them on a list of like the A's, the B's, the C's and the don't worry about it and then the forget about it. You know, because you're not going to be able to say everything in a very compartmentalized uh, amount of time. So it's really about sort of prioritizing the uh, the information and also the things that you could get across quickly that people could understand. In our particular case, we are dealing with sort of socio-political issues and things like that. And sometimes with certain types of subject matter, you need a little bit more time to explain it to people. And then there are certain things you can say to people and they can immediately get it and understand it. So some of it was visual. So it wasn't necessarily what we were saying, it's what we were showing. So you saw shots of people in period dress, or you saw period cars, or you saw newsreel footage, or you saw a few famous people thrown in here and there as well. You heard some audio of some famous people that you recognized from school or something like that as well to be able to get the point across. The, the film is much broader than the, uh, the actual trailer.
Um, and we get into things a little bit more in-depthly and we actually bring in even more information uh, as, as well for people to be able to, to digest as well. And the film feels a little bit more, is more global in, in nature as, as well. It's kind of all-encompassing of many different types of backgrounds, cultures, and diversity and things like that. We just sort of use the uh, 1960s South as our excuse to sort of make our, our point about sort of uh, the progressive nature of humanity and the day and age that we live in. And that's ultimately what the point was, but you know, you gotta finesse it a little bit to get it across. Um, let's see, do I have any? Uh, actually, I have a question for you, sir. Uh, um, at the end, does he end up with the woman or does he follow your advice? Uh, good question, and I don't think even the writer, my acting coach, really answered that. Oh. But uh, what I would, <laughs> what I would like to think is that you know, kind of friendship prevails, and that kind of. Um, more rational minds prevail mm -hmm. and that he realizes, you know, at the end of the day, um, he may be able to live without his fiance, but he can't really live without his best friend. Mm, yeah. You know, which, which is what I would, which is what I hope would happen. Yeah. Uh, and which brings me to you, sir. And how about uh, in, in your film? Um, now, there, there was something that struck, like, I guess, a personal chord with maybe me or maybe anyone here uh, who's been a writer, director, producer, is kind of like putting art before the relationship, especially when you hit a certain age, 30-ish. Right. Uh, did that resonate with you as... Um, I'm sorry, putting the art before the relationship, meaning as a writer, the character? Uh, yeah, I mean, or... it's something... Well, sometimes you got to put the relationship before art. Sometimes you got to put art before the... Right. There, there is a balance, and it's hard. Anyone in this industry could yeah. probably somehow relate to that. I, I think it that, I th yeah, I think that they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, I think sometimes you're you're frustrated and you take that into the relationship. You, the character did not feel accomplished and inferior towards his his girlfriend, and um, so I think they go hand in hand. And I wanted to. I think it's confusing. And I thought when making the movie, it's okay to to show that. The you know it's dissonance because he's not sure what to do, she's not sure what to do, and ultimately you have to make a choice. And one of the lines in the movie, um, "No decision is a decision," so ultimately, um, yes, they go hand in hand. And what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> I guess basically uh, maybe on a personal level. Not that, you know, this is group therapy, but uh, do, does it somehow relate to you? I mean, it, to I, me, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I can, I can attest As an actor, to that yeah. feeling. Yeah. Um, and yeah, parts of it hit home. And I, and I hoped that people could look at it and, and also relate in some way. Okay. Far out. Right. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. I know was, yeah, we got all gentlemen here, yeah. Uh, and uh, I want to thank uh, the sponsors, of course, for the New Media Film Festival, Susan, and of course, uh, you guys, too, for coming out and supporting uh, uh, independent uh, new media. Yeah, so give yourself a round. Of, without you, there would literally be no festival. It would just be us having this weird, awkward conversation. So thanks for coming out. <laughs>